Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello, viewers. It is a blessed Monday, the July 4, 2021. This is the Daily Fountain devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. And the topic before us today is take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself. And the text is Deuteronomy chapter 12, 29 to 32. Deuteronomy chapter 12, 29 to 32. Let's see what the daily scriptural reading today have to tell us about this topic. The instructions of the Lord are always clear for those who are prepared to do his will. The Lord gave a clear warning to the Israelites not to get involved in the worship of foreign gods. They were not to embrace the practice of other nations in serving and worshiping idols. Verse 29 to 31. Because their time in Egypt has shown them that local deities expect their dues of all who inhabit the countries where they exhibit their powers. The Israelites were warned to take heed in order not to slide into the idolatrous living like other nations. This was a timely admonition for the Israelites, even before they settled in the promised land. Beloved in Christ, the Lord is equally admonishing you, and of course all Christians, to take heed to yourself and shun every besetting sin which easily ensnares us. Today, we engage in several forms of idolatrous behavior, such as pursuit of wealth, fashion, entertainment, position, etc., which may rob us of our salvation. The Bible says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Also, we see 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 as it enjoins us. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Let us give earnest heed to these warnings so that we will not drift away from the grace of salvation. In our study of yesterday, it has made it clear to us that one cannot do without God. Therefore, coming to the realization brings us to the point of embracing God and trusting him. If we must walk with God, we must also take heed to obey his instructions. The topic for today, take heed to yourself. And taking from Deuteronomy chapter 12, 29 to 32, exposes to us that we should take heed to what we do, lest we slide to do what God has not asked us to do. When God lays emphasis, it is not for nothing. Our study of last Friday called us to watch. That's another form of taking proper care. And today, we are admonished to take heed to ourselves. God was actually speaking to Israelites 
and we are the Israelites of today, the chosen people of God, the people that God has loved so much, what did God instruct that they should take heed to observe? One, in verse 30, take heed that you are not enticed. Take heed that you are not enticed. When we look at our generation, when we look at our environment, at our society, what is happening today, we will see that a lot of atrocities, atrocities are happening and many people tend to be following them. The trend of event, the trend of life, people will be worried, enticed to love the world. And we will take a look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. And let's see the admonition there to those people that are looking outside to see what is happening in the world. The Bible says there, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. This is an appropriate word for today's youth. In fact, everybody in this generation, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. There has been many enticing things happening around us in the world. People will call you to come and join them, do one thing or the other. That is where money comes from. That is where life is. That is where enjoyment is. And you do not want to know what is happening there. You will follow headlong to the place. That is enticement. And God is calling you today that you do not get enticed with these flashy things happening around you. There is no life in them. That is part of what God has instructed the Israelites not to allow themselves to do. That they should take proper care, take heed that they are not enticed. So today, I enjoin you. Take heed that you are not enticed. Number two, inquire not after their gods. That is what God has told them. Do not inquire after the gods of the people of the land where you possess. Maybe you traveled outside of your locality and you went there, you started seeing things happening. You begin to inquire you will begin to ask questions. How is this one happening? How do they get this? I see many vehicles on the street. I see flashy vehicles. I see tall buildings. How did these people make it? And you already know that they didn't go through the right channel. They didn't go through the right way. They went through the wrong way. That does not mean every prosperous person is a bad person. No. But we know what we are talking about, enticing words of the people. And it says, do not inquire, do not inquire how they make it. Just depend on God. Do not emulate them. Let's see 1 John chapter 2. First epistle of John chapter 2. Let's see verses 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 17. It reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and all and the lust thereof. 
But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Do not inquire. Do not want to know. Love not the world. Do not focus on them. It is not a bad thing for one to be prosperous. But the Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. There is a way one will be chasing money, pursuing money, running after money. Then it becomes bad. It becomes evil. I want to make it. It is a do or die affair. Anyhow, anywhere I make it, I do not care, provided I make money. That is what we are talking about. You are not supposed to allow yourself to be degenerated to that level. Take heed that you do not get to that level. If you don't take heed, gradually you wouldn't know when you will begin to scout for money, when you begin to run for wealth in that manner. And when we look at this, we know that when God is talking about taking heed, it means that it is something that can take you surprisingly, something that can happen to you without your knowledge of it. That's why you should take heed, take proper care to see that it doesn't happen to you. And from here, we can see the evil of the world, what the world has to offer. There is nothing good that comes from the world. Let's see what the world has to offer us. In verse 16, it says, The lust of the flesh, take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared. Take heed to yourself that the lust of the flesh do not overtake you. And we all know what the lust of the flesh is. We see in many places where people are lusted after the opposite sex. That is part of what we are talking about, lust of the flesh. In today's, in our present generation, we see that it is not only that people are lusting after opposite sex, they are also lusting after people of same sex. And that is what the world is clamoring today. Give us one sex marriage, a man will rise up to marry another man. A woman will rise up to marry another woman. That is what we are talking about. The lust of the flesh. Do not allow yourself to be ensnared in that. Take heed to yourself. Number two, part of what the world has to offer us. In verse 16, we see again, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the eyes, take heed that you do not get ensnared in the lust of the eyes. Whatever the eyes see, that is where the body tends to move to. A lot of times, people will open their eyes to see everything that happens around them. They do not have limit to what they look at, to what they see, up to the extent that in churches, young boys, young girls, now it is also getting infected to adults. The pastor will be there on the pulpit preaching and they will be there at the back watching pornography on their mobile phones. Take heed to yourself so that you don't get lusted. Number three, still in verse 16, it says the pride of life. You also take heed so that you don't get ensnared in the pride of life when you are puffed up and you get destroyed. The three of these are called the three world system. How the world operates. When we talk about the world, 
we are talking about Satan and all that he have. He has to give to his own people, the world system. They are not of the Father, but of the world. It is in the world that gas is manufactured. G A S. I call it gas. And what is gas? Gospel according to Satan. Gospel according to Satan. The enemy, the devil, Satan, whom we are warring against. The, he manufactures a lot of things and brings out to people. Someone once told me that in marriage, separation is better than divorce. But do you know that divorce is the senior brother of separation? It is from separation that divorce starts. What benefit do you get in being MS, that is married, single, simply because you have a long or protracted rancor with your spouse and you decided to separate, bringing asunder, whether temporal or permanent. Have you forgotten what God has joined together? Let no man put asunder. That word is very, very important. We keep it in our marriages. And when we have it at the back of our mind, we will never talk about separation and we will never talk about divorce. Take heed that you do not get ensnared in whatever the world manufactures, the gospel according to Satan. At the time, Israel was surrounded by idolatrous nations as we are surrounded by evil men today in the world. Everywhere you go, evil men are there trying to give us what they have. And I tell you, if you don't give an unbeliever in the gospel what you have first, he will give you what he has. At our workplaces, at our schools, markets, etc. We need to give what we have, the gospel. If we fail to do that, if we shut our mouth, they will give us what they have for us. Yet, God was telling the Israelites to take heed irrespective of the idolatrous nations surrounding them, they should take heed to themselves that they do not emulate the life pattern or worship pattern of those nations and that of those whose land they occupy. In our contemporary society, there has been a massive return to idolatry, masquerading, and most youths are going to join because they are not taking heed to themselves. They think there is money in it. And may I ask you, young man, that man overseas in the United States of America, in Germany, in Japan, or wherever, coming back home with pounds sterling, dollars, Sponsoring traditionalism, sponsoring idolatry, sponsoring masquerading in the village. Have you ever asked him, where are your children? His children are over there in the United States, studying, becoming medical doctors, lawyers, successful in life. And you are in the village doing masquerading and he is sponsoring you with peanuts. May God have mercy on you. If by the grace of God, you are touched by this message, you can go to your pastor, and he will pray for you and put you through a follow-up studies that you can stop masquerading and the worship of idols. 
in the name of Jesus. Sexual immorality, on the other hand, is also perversing our society. It is everywhere that when you are not involved, you look like the odd man out. Brother, sister, daddy, mommy, listening to me, man of God, you are not any odd. You are the right person doing the right thing. Continue. Don't get involved. Sexual immorality is not the way. It has never helped any man in life. Rather, it tears families apart. Rather, it brings sicknesses and diseases onto people. Rather, it brings shame onto people. So, take heed to yourself that you do not go, go to join those people. May the Lord help you as you stand on your feet. Take your stand, taking heed to yourself. Just do this and the Lord will bless you. Just take heed to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this interesting topic you are bringing our way. Take heed to yourself. Father, we pray today as we have heard this word, may we all begin now to take heed to ourselves that we do not go back to do what you have asked us not to do. Father, this is our earnest prayer. Help us, for we cannot do anything without you. Standing our ground, making sure we do not do anything you have not asked us to do, we cannot do them on our own accord. Therefore, we ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. May you help us, Lord, to stand and stand for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email are all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.